Hey guys, welcome back. We are here for the back nine of the second round of the 30th annual Tahoe Pro-Am presented by MVP Disc Sports. We're here at Premium Disc Golf. My name is Spanky Edwards. I'm here with my good buddy, Dan Double N Turner. Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're enjoying the coverage so far. Seen some pretty good golf. Uh, yeah, coming to this back nine here, afternoon round Saturday, everybody's already played like a lot of disc golf. Um, 45 holes already. We were playing 54 total today. Uh, Quinn had the hot front nine on, in the, on the coverage here on the card with a six down and then only added one more birdie on the middle nine. Uh, Peter Keen, though, is nine down through 18, uh, creeping up on these guys. And uh, Brian Peterson also carting seven birdies uh, out of the front 18. But uh, here we are rolling into number nine, 19. Yeah, that's some fire there. Yeah. That chase card's coming for him, you know? Mm -hmm. Hole three, old 19, par three, 324. It's a very specific shot. It's kind of got like a low ceiling and like a high floor. This looks a great shot from Andrew. There's the basket. Uh, it looks pretty straightforward, but like I said, you know, it's yeah. a tunnel. It's like with with a with a high floor. I mean, just look where where Evan lined up from. Like he's this is you'll see this a lot. A lot of people are going to line up from that way right, like in the dirt, and just try to hit that front corner because that's going to open up the gap a lot more for the backhand. Uh, definitely the forehand play is you're going to need a lot more turn than that from Tristan. Like definitely got to flex that harder. Yeah. I mean, that was good speed, good height, everything, sure. but he just didn't get just the a little angle. more. The angle was just off a hair. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little more turn. Uh, but again, throwing for that. But again, everyone's going to be lining up for the backhand from that right side because you're just really trying to open up that gap. Whereas if you were to stand directly on the back of that tee pad, that this was a great gap, shot by Will. Yeah. But standing directly on the back of that tee pad, it really pinches off the gap. And again, from the camera, it doesn't seem so bad, but it's a really small gap from from the back of the tee pad. Tristan didn't have much of a look there with the Anheuser knee putt. Here's Quinn from all of 44 feet. Little jumper, count it. Oh, great putt. Berkovitz from downtown. <laughs> Will, nice birdie. Tristan able to clean up his par. Miguel, bag putt birdie's always a nice feeling. Yeah, what a drive. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a, a good feeling. Mid range toss. Good feeling to be right there for sure. He's really good at throwing. Mid ranges, putters, all the frisbees really, but Evan's gonna push that par, move on to hole twenty. Now, where is twenty playing? Yeah, hole twenty is in the, up on the stump, sitting high up. It's a hyzer place, three hundred feet. This looks good for McGill, maybe a little bit inside and kinda hot, but he should have a he should have a Close to circles edge put for birdie. Definitely seems like he's going to be left, though. Yeah, a little inside. Being on the stump, you're going to want to pull it a little more right to, to skip into the stump. Yeah, definitely a basket you want to be close on. But not too close. It's a tall basket. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how, how, how high is the rim? Is it a basketball hoop? Or? Oh, well, it's got it's to be. I don't be... know if I could dunk on it. It might be 10 feet. We'll see when we get up there. Go in. I was good. A little bit inside, definitely. He'll probably have something from Circle's Edge. Oh. Tristan able to hang his out kind of wide right, but a little bit high. Interesting that he didn't go also, with that turnover forehand that he's, like, clearly comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Here he is from 28 feet up on the... Oh, just high. Honestly, honestly, a good, like a, in a weird way, a good rollout. It gives you the better angle. Quinn, Quinn. is not going to be happy with that one. That was a good upshot. Yeah. But yeah, like you were saying, like being underneath it, we are, we are not seeing the best putting demonstration on this basket. But like you said, it's so high. It's so it's so tall. 
it's not a normal elevated basket. It, it, it's above the normal, like, even like the PDGA elevated baskets. Right. Yeah, that ain't that ain't McGill alive. I think he's gonna be muttering to himself after this hole. Here's Collins. Good birdie. Wow. But that's yeah. the distance you want to be because the angle is correct at it. You either are under it or you're at a good angle to. I was good making it look easy. Mm hmm. Tristan with a par cleanup. And then Quinn will tap in his par after Andrew cleans up. Tough hole for Andrew. I just feel like you don't really see baskets this high that often. So. But, uh,. Everybody's playing the same hole, so it's fair. Yeah, like needing to use a staircase to get to it is exceptionally high. But also not being on a, a pyramid or anything. It's just it's just that high. Uh, yeah, hole 21, though. Uh, uh, we're in the shorty, uh, 288, but it, the shorty, that's kind of a new-ish position. There's not a whole lot of fairway. It's like you just like kind of picking your gap with your best shot. Because there's a variety of them, and I'm just like hoping you rattle up there. The only other option is to go down this like clear left fairway, which no one's gonna take. But you could just throw a forehand on that left fairway and hope for a skip, and get yourself in you know within 50. No, this is an We're playing for birdies. I understand that. I'm saying if you didn't like the up the gut, there's a safe play for par up that left side. But no one's gonna take that, obviously. Um, it's kind of a unique position. It's, I mean, you can see where Quinn ended up right off the tee. He's really hasn't progressed very far and still trying to, to get himself towards this. And it, at only 288, it's like, it's crazy that there's, that he's still this far away. Oh, that was a good bid. Yeah, that was a good bid for Andrew. Right? He could have used that birdie too after the the last hole. It's like you can see. Collins, tough look. But you can see even at at 288, it's like if you get all the way there, see it's a super easy hole, and if you hit early, all of a sudden, you know, a, a bogey is super in play. No, for the distance, it like I think it plays as a bonus birdie. Like correct, yeah. You're just like I fully agree. Fully agree. Like yeah. I put it in a quarter. I want a car. Like it's just like it's the slot machine <laughs> shot. Like, you yes. know what I, mean? like, I like that. I like you're that. You're just trying yeah. to hit your gap and, and and hope you get something, you know, makeable. Feed it to the driver. Oh. Tristan, <laughs> the slow motion birdie. <laughs> he almost seemed upset about it. <laughs> he was grinning. Of course. Here we go. Old twenty-two, three oh six. Straight down this little bit downhill, tough shot, couple 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 of tough gaps. You know this one. This is a really wow. This to me is one of the coolest I don't see pin that positions. Shot. That was a sick shot. It, it's hard to tell on camera necessarily, but this actually is a downhill shot. So the low That's ceiling. That's a great throw by Will. I don't mean to interrupt you. No, but not at all. Pure, that was pure. But, it, but it's interesting because the low ceiling actually comes into play like more than you would think. Cause those branches are head high. Those branches are head high. And when, from the tee pad, when you're looking there, you're like, there's the basket. No problem. And it's so common to throw it just a foot high and catch those branches. And, and then you aim down and then you hit these sage brush right yeah, in front of the tee. So it's, it's so actually... No, it's, it's tough. It's a tough hole. It's a crazy skinny gap to hit, but it's a really fun shot to, to throw. And then... We saw uh, Tristan go over the top, and that's another mm -hmm. another play. So it's cool to see people get creative, backhand turnovers over the top, forehands over the top, and then just backhand straight at it. Evan, oh, just off the right side. And then that card path is OB, but it doesn't it doesn't come into play for this pin position at all if you're over there you must have taken a you know a terrible kick so but there's a couple other positions that play like way along that bike path and then way back into the meadow behind them where the sun's shining there we go a little tap in par there 
Quinn. I think this is all clean up parts here at this point. I think. Yep. I'm going to see about one birdie and four pars there. Hole 23, par 3, 325. This is another one where... That's a good shot by Mr. Collins. Uh, yeah, these players have options. They, they, they're going to... I like what Evan did there with that that right gap of something overstable going around that large pine in the it, like just just off to the right of the center um wow is that gonna get all the way there that's an incredible shot there is so many trees in the way for that line yeah i mean when he's lined up that shot he's like picking like a gap that he wants to hit that he think will work and then he he hits that gap and just like you know that's all he can do because there are a lot of trees late on this hole definitely I'm going go in for the hyzer, a little bit inside, but it looks like he uh, finds a way up there for a putt. So I, I, I think that, personally, I think the hyzer play is the best way to get there. That being said, I always try to go straight at it because I love the gap. But anyway, I think that hyzer line is your best chance of getting, like, statistically over and over and over, getting yourself just outside of C1. The inside gap, I think, is the best way to get all the way there, but it's such a crapshoot to get all the way there. Mm -hmm. uh, but looks like what that Will tapped in the bird. That was nice. Yeah, well, and well, I mean, this Quinn. is your lead card, so yeah, like, we're gonna. There was yeah. eight birdies uh, in MPO uh, for round two, and, and three uh, on this card, yeah. right? Yeah, three. Yeah, that's that's great. So I mean, these 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 are your shooters right now. They're, you know, they're they're the ones getting the tough holes. I like sure. it. Hole twenty four, four twenty five. Par three. Oh, a little early tree there. I think that's kind of the. I think that's the play out there. Just. Either down the center gap or just right. Mm -hmm. um, the left gap is great if you can really put a nice flex on something slightly overstable. I think it, it's the best way to get all the way there. But it yeah. definitely brings, it like, the it brings the scary, like, moving left. Like, if you hit early and you move left, it's going to be so Well, there's hard. a lot of bounds over there. And, yeah. it, and if you don't have a lot of bounds, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty convoluted for the upshot. So I agree with you there. But, you know... If you hit the if you hit the left, I'm a left hand forehand player. So when I hit that gap, it's just like one gap on Anheuser with a destroyer, and like yeah. if I get my angle, like it's banging. So I think it's a fair. It's a, it's not like it's there. It's a there's, it's a line. Sure, but you know, 99% of the players that are throwing ready back. <laughs> yeah, we guys are blowing it. <laughs> well, that's a nice shot. Good up shot by Mr. Collins. Tristan, long birdie bid. Not quite. McGill, also for birdie. Oh, it had almost had the height. So close. He gets an almost birdie. Is the sun setting? This has been a long day. So, like, at this point in the tournament, you've played, like, 50 holes of disc golf in one day. And uh, maybe you don't have as much, like, gusto or, like, the patience or, like, you know, like... you. For it, it's it it's an enduro like it's not like crazy amount but like 54 holes in a day it's like it's a lot of golf you know me mm -hmm. I warm up I, I get better after 27 that's true <laughs> <laughs> Will's gonna have to tap in the bug and so is Evan All right, hole 25. Oh, this is right in front of us. Yeah, 240. We're going to see, I would imagine, a lot of putter shots straight at it, but yes. there is also a lot of ways to attack it. Mm -hmm. You. That's a Zephyr by Quinn. Yeah, so, oh, that's a kind of a bummer tree. But there is, like, a right side, like, overstable mid-hyzer. 
Andrew with the Nova. If he misses those trees, it's a pretty good shot. I think he was going up the straight gap, but nice shot. I do think that's the be that's the best play. Obviously, I mean you're looking right at it. But actually, this you can see this is the overstable right side hyzer. Yeah. That's, that's the, the problem. That's the problem with it is that that tree comes into play. That is the most common miss with that line. Whereas if you can I'm surprised just Osgood goes left hand here. I don't. I mean, in my mind, I think he's more dominant righty because that's how he puts. Um, but either arm, you know, it's a fair play. Quinn laying up here for his par. Yeah, I'd be curious to see how many birdies were on this hole for the day because it. It, it's right in front of you. It's There's a group right of them, there. Yeah. There's got to be a lot. There's got to be a lot. It's only 240 feet. I don't want to embarrass all these guys making their pars and, and whatnot, but uh, there were quite a few birdies on this hole. Because, you, you, I mean, every time you step up at this hole, you're thinking ace, but you're also thinking, well, if I don't get the ace, I'll just I'll just take the birdie. Instead. Yeah, more than half the MPO field birdie here. Sure, yeah, so that's expected, right? Yeah. And there were no bogeys. And there was no bogeys. I mean, yeah. it's right there. Of course. And I, I'm not even surprised about it. It's just taking the par definitely feels like... It almost feels like you lost two strokes on the field, even though <laughs> you only lost one. But you definitely want to get that birdie for sure. Is it going to play there any other of the rounds? We'll see. All right. Hole number 26... McGill has shown us the Nova line up the gut. That was pure. Nice throw, Andrew. 243. I love that line that Andrew threw. Yeah, he throws that Nova wall. Yeah, that's like the, I think, the most technical, trickiest line that you can do. This is a really common line because it, an overstable fairway yeah. or... Well, well, that's just mid. the biggest gap on the on the hole. If yeah. you, that right side. Sure. Yeah. If you it, yeah, when you walk over there and actually walk through it, you could drive a truck through it. It's it's pretty it's pretty big. But the backhand and the forehand both kind of they work their ways through that line. Yeah, it looks like Will missed his line a little bit, but it got down there pin high. I don't think I think he's gonna have a look. He'll be happy about that. Quinn again laying up for his par. Yeah, so so Will got pin high, even though he kind of misses line, and he converts. Wow. Nice birdie. Way to take advantage of it, Will. Nice putt. Yeah, great birdie. He doesn't like a nice long jumper. Miguel tap city with that Nova throw. Tristan with the forehand play is also packed for the birdie. Him? Three three birdies on that hole? Yeah, three or five. I would nice. expect four or five. They're better. All right, here we go. Final hole of round two. 231, just straight at it. McGill shows you the line. He's up there at 22 feet. Tristan throwing forehand. There's a million gaps on this hole. Yeah, there's like every what, every which way you can think of it. I would just say, like, whatever you're most comfortable throwing. And a lot of holes at Bijou are like that. It's just like, what's your best shot? All right, like, that. throw that line, you know? What, you know, it's it's a fair fair course, though. Yeah, you, you throw out to the right, don't you? Yeah, I, I throw a shot right to left uh, into the basket with my forehand. Osgood maybe doesn't love it, but he's... Yeah, but 24 feet. Yeah, he's right there. Yeah, he caught those Quinn, little... if he misses this tree, he's pretty much pocked. With the Zephyr. I think that's a Zephyr. It looks like it, because this is way bigger than every other disc on the ground. Tristan finishing his round with a birdie. Eight down. Eight down. That was good. Nice birdie. Here's Will's look from 16 feet. And it's a birdie. Okay, so this is going to be six down for the round. Get myself to 20. Just starts to 17. Doesn't take much time. Easy birdie. 
And Quinn with the Zephyr throw, CTP. We'll finish his round with a birdie and tie for the lead going into final round. We got 27 more holes if you guys tune back in. Round three, looking forward to that. Our lead card's gonna have Peter Keene shooting the hot round, round two, 13 down with a two stroke lead coming in. Brian Peterson with a 12 down right behind him. He's tied with Quinn and Tristan. And Dustin Evanger is following out our lead card here with a 10 down round two. He's uh, three strokes off the lead. Justin Johnson, 12 down. Nice, way to be Justin. Yeah, good to see the little South yeah. Lake homie. Yeah, tune in for a final up. round. Uh, looking forward to watching it. We'll see you there, Spank. Yeah, thanks for joining us, guys.